All right, so this video is about the maxilla. Um, and just a quick note in general about uh, certain bones. You might have noticed from exploring the list of bones and their features on the lab sheet that in some cases, the proper term for something is blank bone. So ethmoid bone, sphenoid bone, palatine bone, those kinds of things. But for other bones, there's no bone after the name. It's just blank, like maxilla, for example. So a quick note about that um, is that any bone that ends in oid or al or ic, these are adjectival endings. So sphenoid, for example, means wedge-like. So it describes a noun. So you have to put a noun so that you're saying what it is that is wedge-like. So sphenoid bone means a bone that is wedge-shaped. Mastoid process means a process that is breast-shaped. So the ones on your list, the bones, that require that you put bone after it are anything that ends in an adjectival ending. So sphenoid bone, uh, parietal bone, frontal bone, those kinds of things. Anything without one of these adjectival endings, you can just say the name of it, like maxilla, for example. So I just wanted to be clear about that because some students err on the side of writing bone after every single answer. And while I appreciate the commitment to accuracy, it's just not necessary. So having explained that, let's check out the maxilla. So I'm gonna turn this a little bit. So to orient you, because this is just one maxilla, we're gonna see this is the medial side because that's the edge of the nasal cavity. And this is it's the orbital side. So that's making up the bottom medial aspect of the orbit or eye socket. And here, we have, actually let me outline that in red, just because this is not a feature that you have to know, it's just for orientation purposes. This bone is called the alveolar bone, which means the tooth socket containing bone, because the socket of your tooth is called the alveolus. Um, so if you're trying to orient this thing, you're gonna want the teeth in the front, duh, and the nasal cavity facing medial, the orbital side facing lateral. So that's how you orient it if you're trying to figure out how it goes just by looking at a disarticulated Achoo. Achoo. Oh, excuse me. I sneezed and I couldn't push the pause button fast enough. So that's gonna be on the recording. My bad. All right. So continuing on for the maxilla, which contains your teeth, the feature that you need to know on the maxilla is this guy, which is the infraorbital foramen. So infra means underneath and orbital refers to the orbit. So the infraorbital foramen is just the foramen that's underneath the orbit. There's one per side, one per maxilla, and that's it. So you just need to recognize it as being the maxilla. And then the infraorbital foramen is the main feature that you need to know on it. So just for orientation purposes, I am gonna rotate this so that we're looking at the underside. The reason is that students kind of have a hard time conceptualizing where the palatine bone is. And so I'm gonna kind of draw where it goes so you understand a little bit better where it's located. So we have the maxilla here, there's no palatine bone featured or pictured. However, I'm gonna draw it in. So the hard palate, is the portion of the roof of your mouth that is bony. So there is a soft palate at the back, which doesn't contain bones, and that's just soft tissue <coughs> forming your uvula, which is that little droopy downy bit in the very back if you open your mouth really wide and say, ah, you can see your own uvula. So that's the soft palate, but the hard palate is made of bone. And specifically, the hard palate consists of this portion of the maxilla, which is called the palatine process of the maxilla. And then at the back, two little palatine bones, I'm just gonna draw one of them here, which are roughly shaped from this aspect like so. So 
So the rear portion, the posterior portion of your hard palate is made up of the palatine bones, not the maxilla. So if I were to draw the rest of the hard palate in here, the other palatine bone, and they come to kind of a point, would look like that. It almost looks like an open book. And then we would have the other palatine process of the maxilla right there. And then watch how poorly I draw teeth. You get the idea. So the palatine bones are two little bones at the back that articulate with the rear aspect of the maxilla forming the rest of your hard palate. So hopefully it's a little easier to get a sense for the palatine bone now that you've had that demonstrated for you. Okay, and I'm gonna stop recording this now and just move on to the next video. So we're just gonna keep chugging away at bone videos uh, as much as humanly possible.